As dancers and choreographers explore new way of moving and create more meaningful way to communicate with our audience, modern dance changes, incorporates and adapts to these new ideas. Please, try to remember this choreography, because later I will come back to it. I'm not a contemporary choreographer. I'm not even pretend to be. I was a professional dancer and now I'm a dance teacher who finished high degree. Almost no one can make a clear definition of what contemporary dance is. And it's clear. Because every piece is so different from each other. Maybe because of that some people love it, some people hate it. And most of the population... I don't understand. Although the dance form is barely over a hundred years old, modern and contemporary modern dance has been a highly mutable technique, encompassing a multitude of ideas and opinions under its large umbrella. Do you like contemporary dance? Yes, yeah, sure, I like contemporary dance, but depends on the contemporary dance. Yeah, I like contemporary, of course. I like contemporary, I like the mixes. Yes and no. Yes. Okay, why? Because it, it gives you a lot of opportunities. You have no borders and you're completely free and you can interpret it on yourself. I like the mixes. I like to be on the floor, to jump up, to be in the middle. I like the mixes. Because contemporary dance for me can be like everything and there are pieces and choreographers which I really like and some that I don't. Because in contemporary dance there are a lot of different directions you can go. Okay, what is contemporary dance? Contemporary dance is for me uh, the connection or the mix between different dance styles. To be contemporary is uh, to be with the time in the epoch or more or less in the in their actual time of, of, of styles. It's dance which is more about the physicality, the composition and the meaning behind the piece than about aesthetics or certain movements or to show something pretty. Contemporary dance uses all techniques, forms of dance and gets people to translate their ideas into their own body language. People experiment and influence the approach to creativity, exploration of movement and feeling. I think contemporary dance can do anything, can be, can be anything. Freedom, no limits. Self-expression. Am I right? Yeah. Maybe. The biggest problem with the contemporary dance that it's very hard to understand what it actually is. Because if you open the books, you will find that it's a difficult dance form to define because of its infinity variety and ability to encompass all other genres of dance. And it can be an intensely personal type of dance. But if you go to the YouTube and search for a contemporary dance, you will find smooth movements with aesthetical backgrounds, or how some people call it, lyrical contemporary. I will change the music, because you know, copyright. However, if you go to the theater, only God knows what you're gonna see. Wait, wait, but what about definition? Contemporary means belonging to or occurring in present. An interesting fact that everything where I have been reading I find that modern and contemporary modern dance come together. What does it mean modern? On the other hand modern means relating to present. Seriously? What is our next stop? Contemporary modern present dance? Or wait, 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 even better. Present, present, present dance. 
Wow, impressive. Something wrong, here should be something else. I think I find. What is modern dance? Um, modern comes way further back from my feeling like um, Isadora Duncan and uh, Martha Graham and, and like really the, the, the roots. They break rules and structural codes. Modern dance is for me more of like a certain technique. The technique styles that is more modern for me. Modern dance is a certain technique for me. Yes, bingo. Modern dance associates with specific names, styles and techniques. However, contemporary dance came from modern dance. So let's go back to the modern dance and try to build an ideological picture of it. This information will help us to better understand contemporary dance. Modern dance is known for avant-garde, or unorthodox, works that push the boundaries of what might be called dance. The story of modern dance starts in America and Germany. Very early in 20th century, modern dance began to take its shape. In different sources I find different names and different information, but I will take the liberty of making it easier. So let's start from the creators. And our first founder is Adora Duncan, and some people call her mother of modern dance. And the second founder, Mary Wigman. At some point of her life she was instructed by Rudolf Laban Technique. Our last founder, Dennis Sean. The full name is Ruth Dennis and her husband Ted Sean. Their way of dancing and thinking inspired first generation. Charles Widman, Doris Humphrey. Martha Graham, Katerina Dunham, Lester Horton. The second generation inherited all the knowledge of previous generations. Merce Cunningham, Jose Limon, Paul Taylor, Elvin L.A., Eric Hawkins. I don't need to describe what single one of them did, but what I do need to describe that's what they have in common and what they went through. These artists were searching for a way to express the spirit of their times. As times changed, so did the dancing. We need to understand that at the beginning of 20th century, world was divided for two ideologies, radical right against radical left. This was one of the reason for two world wars. People constantly asked how future will look like. Exactly at this time, modern dance started. At this time, words freedom was used against the regime, against the society, and of course against the ballet itself. Mother of the modern dance said, I am an enemy to the ballet, which I consider a false and preposterous art. For freedom of movement, she replaced the costume of pink tights, long skirts, and ballet or toe shoes with a simple Greek tunic and bar feet. Furthermore, she gave birth to two children from two different fathers, both of whom she refused to marry. A scandalous deviation from the norms of that day. In simple words, she was considered like a whore. In the society at that time, if a woman cut her hairs, she could get fired from the job, if she was allowed to work. So here we can see that words freedom had a meaning, and she paid the price for that. But on the other hand, in their time, they had something brilliant. They had dreams. We need to understand things like telephone, TV, cars, and much more slowly appear in the society. The communication between the people was much slower. They couldn't easily exchange the information. And because of that, they search an information in completely different things. Let's take Ruth Dennis. While she was a young woman, she was inspired by seeing an image of Egyptian goddess Isis on a cigarette poster and became enthralled with Asian art and dance. To become inspired, it was enough to see a poster. And later on, we see that they brought a world of exotic dance form to America audience, including dances from India, Japan, Egypt and Spain. Curiosity and imagination of modern dancers and choreographers strongly develop multiculturalism. And the last point which I would like to touch before to finish this topic it's of course Martha Graham, which said, Dance is the hidden language of soul. Nobody cares if you can dance well, just get up and dance. Great dancers are great because of their passion. There is only one of you in all time, 
this expression is unique and if you block it you will never exist through any other medium and it will be lost sounds very philosophical and at some point even spiritual but let's take a look behind the curtains she gave her last performance at age of 76. She had choreographed a body of 181 works over 60 years. It means 3 pieces a year. For me it seems that she was obsessed with the work. From all this I draw conclusions that in the base of the modern dance are principles like freedom, curiosity, spiritual and of course working hard. All these principles and ideologies developed into postmodern. Actually, here starts all the main principles of contemporary modern dance. Because postmodern dance is 20th century dance styles. It's a reaction to the compositional and presentation constraints of modern dance. Postmodern dance hailed the use of everyday movements as a valued performance art and advocated unique methods of dance composition, claiming that any movement was dance and any person was a dancer with or without training starts to sound familiar to you, right? Exactly in the postmodern movements get higher value than storytelling. In order to be quiet, and they went through the streets of Rome to St. Peter's. Well, I don't know what traditional choreography is anymore. Um, the way that people approach something called dance is just so peculiarly conservative, and I can't understand why. What is the, what, what are we hanging on to? There are huge problems in choosing not to be in the mainstream of, of dance. I thought that I was going to have a traditional life. Somewhere along the line, the mold broke. And the one difficulty with me in modern dance is that I never quite got along with dance composition, modern dance composition, as it was given. This is crazy, I know, but that there's another energy source, too, within the body. And that that's why one dances. If one dances just to make pretty dances, one gets such a rare opportunity to perform enough, so it has to have a, a more concrete reason for doing it. It has to connect to something else. What actually they trying to say that anyone can be a dancer, dance can be anything, dance can be performed anywhere, all the movements can be dance, and of course combining dance with film, photography, painting, speaking, and so on. I know that conservative people consider this time as a beginning of chaos. More liberal people see the future behind it, so my personal position is somewhere in the middle. However, I find postmodern time very interesting. Just look how much innovative discoveries were created and how much used until today. For example, contact improvisation, which lead to the normal improvisation. By the way, what you see now on the screen, it's improvisation. And before to move on, I would like to check last but very interesting perspective. Father of the postmodern dance said, Dance gives you nothing back. No manuscripts to store away. No paintings to show on the walls and maybe hang in the museums. No poems to be printed and sold. Nothing. But that single fleeting moment when you feel alive. Sounds very nice, but on the other hand very egoistic. This perspective fits very well for our dancers, but in this perspective we cannot see any relation to the audience. How important is the spectator, the observer, to your dances? Cut seven, in well, that's always a difficult question to answer because you make the dance really, or I think I'd probably do for myself. And that is, it's something that interests me to do, so I make it that way. But then I make it, and I make it with the company, my company. Then we, of course, present it to a public, but that public can be very few or many, and I never think that, <coughs> that a public is a single thing. It always seems to me that there are a number of different people who can react differently. For me it sounds that public is somewhere there. They are not important anymore. But what important is that I and me in the middle. However, postmodern dance, as a modern dance before, was breaking the structures and normatives of the day. So I don't find it something new or extraordinary. But I'm still curious why everything went that direction and not another. And if we will consider that artists just are mirroring their time, then we will see that in the society developed political movement named identity politics. Briefly, this movement aimed at ensuring that minority received the same rights as the majority. Postmodern dance gave us a lot of different dance compositional tools and pushed the aesthetic boundaries very much. 
I can't say if it's something good or something bad. But what I can say that they put the movements above the storytelling. And that fact that choreographers didn't care about the opinion of our audience costed a lot of discussions. And before to go back to contemporary modern dance, I would like to make a little test. The test aims to assess the meaning of the movements. Do you remember? I ask you to remember the choreography at the beginning of this video. Please leave in comments if it's exactly the same choreography. And to make it even more harder, let's change the dancer. What actually contemporary modern dance is? For modern dance started mixture of different styles and curiosity for new ideas. What if? But only postmodern dance broke the last wall by connecting dancers and non-dancers. With that we got endless type of movements which choreographer and dancers can use. However, contemporary modern dance is more open mind. For example, in contemporary modern dance isn't bad to show ballet movements or to tell any story. Exactly against this was postmodern dance. And one more difference is technology. Today people exchange information super fast. Plus you can film and documentate any pattern of movements and ideas, light technologies and so on. I think you understand what I mean. Contemporary modern dance is curiosity. All the time searching for new ideas. All type of movements. Literally all type of movements from completely different fields. Any places to perform. No costumes required. You can be even naked and it's gonna be fine. No relation to the music. You can work with the music without music or even work with the music but don't count or don't be related to the music. And if we will combine all these elements together then we will see that contemporary modern dance very experimental type of dance. And I will be honest with you, I'm not a big fan of contemporary modern dance. And when I started this video, I wanted to criticize it. However, after making my research, I understood it's not a chaos, although it looks like, but it's a labor where people combine the different ingredients and sometimes they get a new element, which can be very important for the dance world. The story of modern, postmodern and contemporary modern dance is a story of rebellion. Each generation of dancers inherits the technique and assumptions of the previous generation, continue to question inherited boundaries placed on the dance form. It doesn't mean that I like everything what's going on with contemporary modern dance. And in my next video I gonna speak about the weaknesses of contemporary modern dance. But for today, I'm done.